Hey everyone, it's Chantal Girardi from Online Business Marketing and today we're going to ask the question, what is your business brand identity? Um, and I'm going to give you a guide on how to improve your online brand personality so that you can stand out for your competitors. So uh, in the world of online marketing, standing out obviously is really important. Um, you need to be scroll stoppable <laughs> um, because else, you know, there's just so many colors, fonts, tones, pictures, whatever, literally we just get completely overwhelmed. So your brand identity is responsible for guiding potential customers to your business um, and making you more memorable. It's not just about logos and catchy taglines. It's about crafting a unique personality for your business that resonates with your target audience. Now, this is really important. A lot of the time when people are doing a brand, sometimes they think about themselves in their brand. But what you really need to be thinking about is the other person and how they are going to be receptive towards your brand. So it has to be friendly towards them. Your brand has to be relevant to them and wanted by them. So today, when we talk about brand identity, we're going to talk about the 12 different brand archetypes, and we're going to discuss the importance of it in your online marketing. And then we're also going to do a bit of a quiz. So make sure you've got pen and paper out. It's going to be multiple choice. I'm going to talk real fast like I normally do, which means you're going to have to um, come up with the first thing that comes to mind. And this is actually kind of a good thing, I think, because when we do this, sometimes we overthink it. So, you know, when I give you like 12 different multiple choices for something, uh, am I this one? Um, am I that one? Or oh, what was that other one you said? When really it's got to be the first one that comes to mind is usually, you know, the first one's usually the best one, right? So what is the importance of branding in your online marketing? Well, firstly, let's start with some statistics, okay? Let's talk about recognition. So brand recognition, how your brand's going to be recognized above everyone else's. So a strong brand can increase recognition by up to 80%. So it can prove your recognition by 80% if your brand is strong. And remember here, I'm going to say this again, we're not just talking about logos, colors, fonts. We're talking about tone, message, voice, feel, personality, okay? Number two is trust. 59% of customers prefer to buy products from brands they trust. So it increases your trustworthiness by 59%. So you can see how important it is to get this stuff right. Number three is loyalty. 64% of customers say shared values as say shared values are the primary reason they have a relationship with the brand. Okay, so this is they're talking about the values are the same as the brand. It's super, super important for connection. Fourth is revenue. Consistent branding can increase revenue by 23%. So think about how much money your business made this month. Times that by 23% and imagine earning that more just because your branding is consistent and you've put a bit of thought into it. And the last one, competitive edge. 77% of B2B marketers believe a strong brand is crucial for growth. Okay, so... The essence of your brand. Your brand is basically the soul of your business. Okay? The soul of your business. It comprises of various elements, including your name, so your business name, your logo, your color palette, your typography. So I had this conversation with someone the other day about the typography. We're talking about your fonts that you use. Who likes to change their font every time they do a Canva graphic? Oh, I know there's going to be someone on this call that likes to do that. There we go, Leah. <laughs> there's always going to be one. <laughs> um, so uh, typography, keep your fonts the same. Voice and tone. So are you serious? Are you funny? Are you comical? Are you um, eco-conscious? Like what is that tone and voice? Um your brand story. Now, I'm not going to go into this, but I am going to say to you to go to onlinebusinessmarketing.com.au, go to free resources, go to blog, and you will find a whole blog on coming up with your brand story because your brand story is incredibly important. It's the story about you that makes sense 
to your audience in your brand? What is your brand story? And we all have one. We just have to find it. I know, Mayi, you had a fun, we had a fun session doing this together, um, coming up with your brand story. And the last one is values. And it's the last one, but it's probably the most important one because it is values, because values beat connection. It, it builds that know, like, and trust. And people will pay anything if they feel comfortable with you and your values. Okay, so it is a cohesive force that ties your business together. It makes you memorable. It makes you relatable to your audience. And, um, and, and, you know, they say this all the time, connection comes before content. Connection comes before content. Your content can be worse, but if your connection's great, you'll make more sales. So connection before content. And your brand personality is responsible for all of that. Okay? Now, there is a difference between your brand identity and your business brand identity. And I think it's really important that you understand that there is a difference and we will get into it. But I'm going to bring that up right now. Who you are as a person and how you are online in your personal profile has its own personal branding, which may or may not be the same. And remember, all people stalk and all people will check you out. And they will want to see if there's congruency between the two. They don't have to be the same, but it's got to make sense, right? You can't say that you are um, eco-friendly, you're selling an eco-friendly brand, you're all eco-conscious. The next minute they go onto your personal profile and you're sitting and you, you're, you're walking around and you've got paper towel, uh, drink bottles, you know, the, the little drink bottles and stuff, um, and you've got dustbin bags everywhere, um, and that's what that's how it looks on your personal profile. So it's got to make sense. You can be different, but it has to make sense because we all know that you are stalkable and people do stalk. Okay, so personal branding versus business branding and already start to think how they may be slightly different. Okay, all right. So to, to determine your brand identity, there are five steps, all right? Number one is define your core values. So even if you want to write this down quickly, your non-negotiable values, identify the values that drive your business, okay? Now, these are your business values, your business product offer values. So what are the values of your business? Maybe it's customer service, maybe it's integrity, Maybe it's eco-friendly. The non-negotiable values of your business. And you should have around three to six. What does your business stand for? Now, I'm going to say this again. If, if you want to do this, have two pieces of paper, but really you should do them on different days. Um, have personal branding on one page, have business branding on the other, and go, my personal values are this, my business values are this. Now, this is important because we do social media management for a company. I'm not going to mention the name. And personally, this person is exceptionally controversial about a whole lot of political things on their personal profile. They go blah, 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 all the time. Like they are totally out there smashing it. Now, in their business brand, it's a fun brand. It's a sociable brand. It's a come and have fun together, come and have everything together. Now, what we've noticed recently, and this is why I'm not sharing with you what the brand is, what we've noticed re 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 um, recently is that <laughs> our social media for the business has suddenly started to dip. We're getting less take-ups. And when we went in and we ran all the analytics and we did all the insights, we noticed that it's because on their personal profile, they'd been going hell for leather. Hell for leather, controversial stuff. So what's happening is these people are thinking, come and do this, come and enjoy this brand, come and do this. And they're going, crap, hola, I just want to stay away from that. That's like full on in my face. I don't want to be a part of that. So the take up at the moment is less. So we contacted the business owner and we're now making their profile a lot more private. I've gone, invite your friends on, keep your other things, um, keep your public posts 
Let's make them to friends only. Let's tone it all down because it's affecting this business. And you know what this person said when we contacted them and said, this is what we've noticed. They said, oh, I've just been applying for a part-time job. And the last three times that I've applied, I've been turned down and I couldn't figure out why. And I said, it's because they're looking at your personal profile. Okay, I'm just sharing that story with you because whether or not you like it or don't like it, personal brand, business brand, you've got to make sure that you know where you stand on each and who is seeing what because it does impact you. It does. Okay, so values for both. Know your audience. Understand. So so number two is under, know your audience. Understand your target audience's preferences, their needs, and their pain points. Okay, what resonates with them? And how can you address their concerns? So your brand has got to address their concerns. It's about what's in it for them. Number three is that brand story. And social media social, you've got to keep telling that story. You guys all on this call have heard me tell my story a thousand times now, right? I swear every time you would have read it, you would have seen it, you hear me tell it like a thousand times. But guess what? It's memorable. That's my brand story. So if someone comes to your page and they don't know your brand story, you're not doing a good enough job with your brand. Your brand story is part of it. Share your journey. Share your why. People want to know your why behind the business and how it adds value to the customer's life because they go, oh, my gosh, if Leah can't smell candles and she's never been, you know, she's been irritated by smell and candles and been going through all of this and her son has suffered this, you know, horrible health issue or whatever. Oh my gosh, you know, I want to support Leah and her business. I want to be a part of her movement and her brand because I trust her and I know that she's in it for all the right reasons. She's not just in it to make money. But if people don't know your story and your why and you're not telling it enough, you're throwing one of your brand arms down the toilet. Well, if you're an octopus, it would be one of your brand arms. Um, number four is visual identity, okay? Creating a unique and memorable logo, color scheme, and your fonts that reflect your brand's personality. So you'll notice my fonts and everything are very clownish, round, playful, because that's my tone online. So I use a comic font. I use a bitmoji. But guess what? I'm very much like that in myself. So it makes sense if someone's going to work with me, right? So it's playful. So think about the fonts that you're going to. And remember, it's not just about you, but it's got to resonate with your audience. You would have noticed in the last couple of years, I've tidied mine up a bit. My font's actually been less playful and everything's been a little bit more serious ever since we became a company and we became online business marketing. The brand had to move to more trustworthy because playful, it's like, can I trust her? <laughs> if she's so playful, i am still got to trust her, right? So you've just got to make sure that it does make sense. But I want to talk about logos just for two seconds. Most people know that I'm a logo hater. Um, too many logos hold people back and I just, believe that logos are not that important anymore because we just don't remember them. I believe that since social media came out, we're more likely to remember, um, you know, more likely to remember the person, especially if you're dealing with the person. It's going to be different for Daryl and for Tara because they're selling products. Um, Maybe for Leah, although Leah is very much involved in her marketing, so her personal brand is stronger, although, Tara, you are doing lives and that now in your brand as well. So at the end of the day, I believe if you've got a personal brand, people are more likely to remember you than they are your business name or your logo. So don't let your logo hold you back. Okay? Cool. Um, everyone knows it took me a year to choose my last one and that was a nightmare and I'm still Stellar Adventures Australia. I still haven't changed that logo yet. I still haven't settled on a new one. So, and that's been a couple of months now, about five months. Um, okay, last one's consistency. So when we talk about consistency, this is for the leaders of the world who are very creative and they want to change the feel. They want to change the color of every post. They want to change 
the the font of every post. They want to change the the color schemes, the messaging, the the everything. And I'm sorry, we just have to be boring as batshit, and we just need to do same font, same whatever, same whatever, and just keep it all the same. I know, I get you. I also want to mix it up, but it does nothing for our brand. Um, so consistency across all t brand touch points, including your website, social media, and marketing materials. Can you imagine if social media, they see one thing, then they get to the website and they see a completely different feel. Are they going to trust you? Now, believe it or not, there's a, there is a marketing coach that is teaching people to have a different LinkedIn profile feel to their Facebook feel. And I don't believe in that. You know, I understand it's B2B and B2C and maybe your tone's going to be a little bit different because it's for B2B, but there still needs to be the same brand feel. Because if I'm on Facebook and I see one thing and I go to the other, I'm just not going to feel the same trust. I'm going to go, why are you guys schizophrenic? Which one are you? Are you this one or are you that one? You know, ah, I'm confused now. Confused by and by is nothing. So you need to determine the tone, the voice, the content, and the key messaging. Now, this is important as well. The same words need to be repeated again and again. So when I always say to you, write that down in a piece of paper, that becomes part of your key messages. Those are your mission statements. They are the things that you say every single day. Every single day, when you write a book, you say it. When you do a podcast, you say it. When you go to a barbecue and you're at the barbecue and you talk to someone, you say it. They're the things that you say all the time that come out of your mouth. They become your weapons, your word weapons. And those words need to be written down and they need to be sprinkled across everything. And you need to have a handful of them that are... Um, that, um, that are obviously your mission statement, ones that you use all the time. Um, and then don't forget your emojis. So you can have, I recommend you should have up to five branding emojis. So five emojis that you like to use on an ongoing basis that, that relate to your brand. And try not to use the common ones. There are more emojis than, than we actually think they are. Try and find ones that are more memorable and go with those ones. All right, let's have a look. And there is a butterfly one. Who was I doing butterfly with the other day? There is a butterfly emoji. Angelique, I know you do butterflies. Jay, I'm sure you do butterflies as well. Um, yeah, there is a, but I think it's blue. It's a blue butterfly. Oh, it was for another brand. You can't change the color of the emoji. We tried. It's blue. <laughs> it's a blue, blue butterfly, but decide if it's part of your branding. Okay. So, um, it will, it's a crucial step in crafting a cohesive and compelling online presence. Um, so you need to determine what your brand's core values, target audience, overreaching goals will be. Okay. So when it comes to your tone, these are things to consider. Is it a friendly tone? Is it a formal tone? Is it a casual tone? Is it an authoritative tone? Is it um, so that you can set the overall style of communication? I mean, I won't lie to you. I had a client of mine the other day reach out and told me she was offended by my use of emojis, you know, and what we've worked out that she's not my ideal client. I don't know how she, you know, she became a client, she signed up and she gets highly offended by my use of emojis. Um, so, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not one size fits all, but, um, it is important for you to know, um, we, I've had it before where I used to use the word stalk quite a bit and I still use it. And I've had at least over the last eight years, I've had at least maybe two to three people that have commented on my use of the word stalking and said it was inappropriate. I had a gentleman, uh, two gentlemen in emails, and I've had one lady, um, who reached out in Messenger saying they don't like the way that I use the word stalk. Okay. Um, and they are, wow, they are my ideal clients because they're older, they don't kind of understand social media, but you've got to be willing to change and embrace change. So maybe that's why they're not my ideal customers because they're not willing to embrace change. But I just, the reason I'm sharing that with you is that it, it, it's going to offend somebody, but that's okay. It's it's absolutely okay. Um. Establish a consistent voice that reflects your brand's personality, ensuring that it resonates with your audience, okay? My audience has got to put up with me working with them one-on-one -on -one or group like this. 
You're not going to sit for an hour and tolerate me. I mean, uh, May, she she watched me on YouTube and then reached out because she liked the way that I presented and did things compared to other YouTubers that she listened to. So, you know, I caught her, but I'm not going to go catch some other people. So you just do you, boo, and that's okay. Um, number three. Develop content that addresses the pain points and interests of your target audience customers, offering value and relevance in every piece. But keep that tone. Keep your brand emojis in there and keep that feel. I still put lol. I still do OMG WTF. Okay. I've had people tell me they don't like the use of my acronyms. And that's part of my, uh, when I email market, you'll notice my OMG, you know, LOL, you'll see those in there. I've been told that my overuse of exclamation marks makes me feel like I'm shouting at everyone. I have been told that my excessive use, well, not well, they thought it was excessive, but I do use it more than most. I use it in inappropriate places, bold and capital letters. And I've been told that some people find that really offensive. Or it's not good English but it's part of my branding. I will use, to break up long content, I will use uh, bold and I will use capital letters. So consider, is that going to be part of your branding? I use exclamation marks because when I talk, it's like I'm exclamation marking you, right? Yes, it is. So it's the same feel. Okay, so... This approach to content marketing will strengthen your brand identity and it will increase trust and loyalty amongst your online audience. All right, let's get into the 12. You might want to jot this down, right? So get pen and paper, jot it down. Uh, but these are the 12. I mean, you can Google them too, but I'm going to give it to you real fast. Right. Um, put stars next to the ones that you think your business branding is. So for now, just put your business branding hat on. Do not put your personal preference Put your brand, your business, the product you sell, and your brand, your brand voice and outcomes, put that hat on. Okay? Not your personal preferences and things like that, right? Put that on. Right. Number one, the innocent. It represents purity, simplicity, optimism. It's ideal for brands that are offering safety and happiness. Light and pure colors such as white, light blue, and pastel shades. Think of Disney. Disney embodies innocence, magic, and the joy of childhood. Its wholesome characters and stories have captivated generations. Number two, the sage emphasizes knowledge, wisdom, expertise. It's suited for educational and consultancy businesses. Deep and thoughtful colors like dark blue, green, and rich earthy tones. Think of IBM, which represents knowledge, expertise, and innovation in the tech industry. It's known for wisdom and problem solving abilities. Number three. Number three, the explorer celebrates adventure, freedom, curiosity, attracts thrill seekers, and those seeking new experiences. Earthy and adventurous colors such as brown, green, and khaki. Think of GoPro, which appeals to adventurers and explorers with its rugged cameras designed for capturing action-packed moments in extreme environments. Four, the hero stands for bravery, resilience, and the desire for a better world, well-suited for companies focused on making a positive impact. Bold and strong colors like red, blue, gold. Think of Nike, which inspires individuals to do their best um, and overcome obstacles. Think of their Just Do It um, slogan, which embodies heroism. Number five, the outlaw embraces rebellion, nonconformity, and empowerment, appeals to those who want to challenge the status quo, rebellious and edgy, edgy colors like black, dark red, and silver. Think of Harley Davidson, which symbolizes rebellion and freedom of the open road, appealing to those who want to break free from conventions. The magician symbolizes transformation, innovation, and a sense of wonder. Ideal for cutting edge technology and visionary brands. Mysterious, transformative colors like purple, deep blue, and black. 
Think of Apple, which known which is known for its transformative and innovative products that seem to work like magic. It changes the way we interact with technology. The guy or girl represents authenticity, reliability, down-to-earth values, attracts everyday consumers, down-to-earth and relatable colors such as brown, beige, and muted tones. Think of IKEA, approachable, down-to-earth brand focusing on affordable and functional home furnishes for everyday life. The lover exudes passion, sensuality, and desire, works well for luxury and lifestyle brands, sensual and passionate colors like red, deep pink, burgundy. Think Victoria's Secret, which embodies sensuality and desire um, to celebrate beauty and self-confidence. The jester embraces humor, spontaneity, and fun, Appeals to those who seek entertainment and enjoyment. Fun and playful colors such as bright yellow, orange, and vibrant red. Think Coca-Cola, joy and happiness in its advertising, often using humor and fun in its marketing campaign. The caregiver embodies compassion, empathy, and support, suited for healthcare and wellness businesses. Soothing and nurturing colors like light green, soft blue, and pastel pink. Think Johnson & Johnson, um, associated with caring, nurturing, and trust, offering healthcare products for families. The creator represents innovation, creativity, self-expression, ideal for artistic and DIY-orientated brands, innovative and creative colors like bright and unconventional hues. Think Lego, which encourages creativity and self-expression through its building blocks, inspiring individuals to create their own worlds. And the last one, the ruler, stands for authority, leadership, and control. Appeals to those who seek stability and order. Authoritative and classic colors such as deep purple, royal blue, and gold. Think Rolex, which symbolizes authority, luxury, and timeless elegance in the world of watches. It is a symbol of success and prestige. All right. In the chat box, you're only allowed to write one. I know. One. Okay, so our live audience, I mean, you'll have the benefit of being able to have the written content for this, um, which is awesome. So you'll be able to go back and look at this. But if your life depended on it and you had to choose one, not the one you think you should be, but the one that your that your business brand is, <laughs> put it in. Um, just so that you know, um, I really struggled with this one because I saw myself in a whole lot of them. But when I looked at all of them, most of the points for my brand is the creator. Okay. So for me and what I do, the creator, it's innovation, creativity, self-expression. So I'm encouraging that in marketing and I'm encouraging the DIY element. And if you have a look at the colors that I've got, I've got blue, uh, navy blue, apple green, yellow, kind of like Lego. Because I want business owners to DIY their creativity and create their own worlds. But if I went to my personal brand, my personal brand is going to be more something like, uh, where was it? No, that's not it. My personal brand would be something more like, oh, goodness me. Probably the hero because I inspire people to want to be the best that they can be. And I love the Just Do It slogan. All right. So these examples demonstrate how different brands embody specific archetypes to connect with their target audience and convey a distinct brand personality. Um, while these brands are iconic in their archetypical representations, it's important to remember that branding can be a complex and evolving thing. Okay. I mean, I like the idea of forcing you to choose one because I think it's going to make you stronger when you can go on, go and do your Googles, go and have a look at it and really get to know and understand that brand. Follow all the examples because there's there's many more. I only gave you one example today of a popular brand per, per archetype. But if you just choose one that you want to embody, then you can become strong in that thing. But once I say to you two, it's like having one daughter versus two daughters. I've now got to feed two daughters versus one, okay? Much easier to feed my one daughter than to feed my twins, trust me, especially when I was breastfeeding twins. 
um, much easier. So for you, it's much easier and stronger for you if you sit in one space and really go on and get to learn what that space is and go, go in that space really strong. Look at other brands and go, this is it. This is what I'm going to do and do strong. Okay, so I've got a quiz. Now, this is a, this is pretty tough, this quiz. I don't know if I'm going to be doing this twiz, quiz with you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm probably going to say goodbye to the um, online people that may be watching this. Um, and the reason for that is, is that this is going to be a bit difficult. Because there's 12 archetypes, um, in order to determine it, I have to ask you a question. Then I have to go over 12 possible solutions. And then you've got to choose one out of 12. So it's going to be quite complicated. Um, so I think this is going to be something that's going to be better for my live audience and not so much for my online audience. So to my online audience, I say, go and find out your brand identity, choose one, get to know that one thing really well, um, and then go out and shout that one brand from the rooftop. And that includes your tone, your voice, your colors, your fonts, um, and, 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 and absolutely everything consistently across all platforms so that you can become more relatable and more memorable. Uh, if you want to be part of the live audience and the little chin wag that we have beforehand, along with networking uh, and the follow-up feedback, Facebook support and recordings, uh, then you do have to become a VIP and the link will be in the comments below.